today's topic would be digital transformation using MuleSoft that wins customers. And we have a wonderful speaker, Sonali. Um, so, so as we all always do, let, we'll introduce ourselves to you. So I'll start. That my, my name is Mahesh, and uh, I work as a MuleSoft developer at McKinsey Investments. I have over, overall 10 years of experience, uh, IT experience, and seven years of uh, integration experience. I am three times MuleSoft certified, and it's uh, like almost three and more than three years I've been working on MuleSoft. Before that, I worked on Tipco. Yeah, so that's pretty much about me. Uh, I'll hand it over to Kishore. Thank you, Mahesh. Hi, everyone. My name is Kishore. I'm working as a solutions architect at MuleSoft. I have overall 15 years of experience in integration and API technologies. And currently, I'm working with the MuleSoft Professional Services Group, helping the fintech clients uh, to maximize the benefit that they would be getting out of AnyPoint platform with the C4E enablement, helping them to set up the AnyPoint platform and also uh, helping them and guiding them with the meals of best practices. So that's pretty much about me. So, thanks, Kishore. And uh, we have uh, Sonali as today's speaker, and I'll let Sonali introduce herself. Uh, thanks. Thanks so much, Mahesh and Kishore. Uh, hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Sonali. Uh, I am in the Chicago area uh, from, I'm in the United States working from last 12 years, more than 15 years of experience I have in uh, IT industry so far. Uh, from last four plus years, I'm working uh, as a MuleSoft architect, currently working as a senior enterprise level architect. As the current uh, responsibilities are uh, establishing the architecture group establishing the MuleSoft platform as a chief architect for the digital transformation initiative, helping the clients, various clients out uh, to achieve their goals of digital transformation with the, by using MuleSoft and MuleSoft is the best platform. Uh, as we all know, it's a very best platform uh, for integration and in enterprise uh, like service bus. It's a very, well, uh, it's an excellent platform to work on. And uh, I'm a Mu uh, re recently selected as a MuleSoft mentor and also MuleSoft uh, certified API designer. Uh, thanks so much for uh, for giving me a chance to introduce myself and speak, speaking for this event. Yeah. Thank you, Sonali. We are happy to have you as a speaker. So moving forward, we have some important announcements. Yeah, as a safe harbor statement. So both speaker and organizers, uh, we are not representing any, any uh, companies here, and this presentation is strictly, strictly for uh, learning purpose. And, we, and the presentation is not meant for any promotional activities. Yeah. And some news about the release we have. New Studio 7.10 with the API Kit O data support. Uh, the link is in the slides. We also have announcements for any point functional monitoring, and we also have uh, the enhanced API manager look and feel, which has a better visibility of error rate and the total requests sent on the API. And uh, we, we 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 would like you to uh, we would request all our participants to take this survey. Uh, which would help uh, the developer experience. Uh, I would I'll paste this link in the chat so that uh, you can uh, you can save it and later on take the survey. And yeah, uh, this is for the question and answers. Uh, it would be it would be good if you uh, post the questions on the Q and A tab which we have on the uh, chat so that any of the questions don't get a uh, lot in between the chats and uh, yeah the fun part is we do have quiz and we have three 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 prizes to give away in the form of uh, certificate uh, in the form of training vouchers so there are a few few rules to it the questions will be asked during the presentations so uh yeah guys you need to be really attentive during the presentation 
it won't be asked at the end and uh, if you have already answered a question uh, let then uh, let others also answers and give opportunity to other attendees as well and the first answer in the chat would be taken as a winner the correct answer basically unless it's from someone else that already answered another question and the other thing is you can only win one voucher per month regardless of the meetup city and uh, you can you can't participate if you have already a meetup leader or an ambassador yeah and if you've already won a voucher before in, in in the event in the same month then you won't be able to receive the voucher yeah. and if at all you win the quiz so what all what you need to do is just send in the name and email address to us in the chats and then uh, from there we'll request the news of teams to provide you the vouchers and they'll reach out to you and these vouchers you can you and it will be processed in 10 business days and you can see that in your training account and if you have any questions you can raise a ticket to training.newsoft or you can reach any of the organizers and we'll help you out if you don't get the vouchers yeah, so that's it. Uh, without taking much time, uh, I'll hand it over to Sonali and I'll stop sharing my screen. Over to you, Sonali. Thank you so much, Mesh. I'm just sharing my screen now. You able to see my screen now? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, I hope everyone is able to see my screen and uh, let's get started with the with today's topic uh, that is digi digital transformation with Newsoft and that with its customers. Uh, so, agenda for this meeting is uh, to understand the digital transformation. What what is digital transformation? What are the current trends in digital transformation? Designing the API strategy. How Newsoft help us uh, in successful digital transformation for any organization of any industry? And we will see also some case studies that how Mulesoft has helped help them achieving their digital transformation goal and how, how the results are really amazing that, uh, custom, uh, that different clients of the Mulesoft wanted to achieve. So let's get started. So I'll first start with a very general day-to-day -day scenario that we are all, uh, we are all, uh, all facing, like we are all doing uh, by ourselves like we are uh, in day-to-day -day lives uh, if you all observe the day-to-day -day lives we do like we we uh, we uh, spend half of our day on on digital devices on the uh, whether it's nine to five uh, our job it's on uh, online right now whether it's a shopping experience whether it's uh, uh, searching or some information online we are ordering food even online. Uh, we are also paying our insurances online. We are also uh, doing our banking stuff online. So all, almost in uh, like all the, all the areas of our of our life and our day to day activities, online and digital. Um, we do most of the stuff through on on uh, online through digital devices, whether it's a mobile, whether it's a web or whether it's uh, whether it's on the uh, our watches even so it's like it's like that that's in our day to day activities it's so much we are so much involved uh, doing everything with the digital uh, digitally that we don't even realize that whatever we do digitally on like whatever we do online there are like lot of lot of flows happening lot of systems getting connected interacted with each other behind the scenes and the organization or the company who provides us the service that is basically handling all those behind the scenes 
So for example, if we shop something from Amazon, then Amazon by just one click, we put the order, we, we select the stuff, we, put, we select the product, we, select, we put the order for that, uh, to purchase that product, we put the order online and we, that is what, with just only one click. But we never, we never even think about like uh, what if we just click a button, but by clicking that button, lot of activities are happening behind the scenes. There are a lot of systems connected each other. They are passing the information uh, from one, one system to another system, from one, uh, one point to another point, from uh, data is passing from the server from the uh, actually the data where it's stored from that storage location to the user screen and uh, like what so a lot of interactions happen behind the scenes so this is in this screen you can see the like the company is providing the service to the customer but, but when well the act customer is actually seeing the mobile screen and doing the order but Putting, by putting the order that there are a lot of connections happen behind the scenes with, uh, within the, with different systems. A lot of systems are involved and they are all, all disconnected to each other. They are not connected with each other. Now see as for the companies who are providing the services, they have like, they have, this is the big challenge for them. Like, because the systems are not connected, data is not connected with each other, even in the organization, even people who are working in the organization, they are not aware about like where the data resides, that data is not discoverable, that data is totally disconnected. And uh, also on top of that, uh, and even not, not only the data, but even systems uh, are disconnected. Be, uh, so, but on and, and top of that, what's happening, like there is explosive growth of systems adding every year, the organization taking the, like, just, uh, just like kind of they, uh, they buy the systems, they, they want to expand, expand uh, their infrastructure, they want to enhance this, uh, and uh, enhance the services, they want to create the new products with the new systems, but they are adding the new systems. But even, even that, even the custom, like the custom code, code for the systems are there. And, and on top of that, these new systems are getting added. So even the older systems are not connected with each other, even the newer system, which are get, get like uh, added every year, that is also not disconnected. So it's, it's kind of like, complexity is growing and it is getting compounded every year in the organization. And on top of that, they have to maintain the user experience. They have to maintain the existing systems and they are adding the new system that, that like uh, the culture, like all the, uh, all the infrastructure and the systems and uh, like data, it's, and even the people who are working in the organization, it's like all become the, become more disconnected they are more uh, they are more uh, uh, like feeling the stress of maintenance as well as uh, doing the new product and services so that's that's the the if if we think about the traditional integration approaches that is through the custom code the systems are connected but the the older system which are connected with the custom code if with that custom code, when the newer systems are getting added, it's not, it's not coping up with the newer system, the custom code, because for every system uh, added to the network, they're like, they have to like uh, write the new custom code for that system. And it's like, it's like kind, kind of complexity. Uh, and they, they can't cope up with the current business demand, the current consumer demands. Like, and IT is really become like, integration is the biggest, biggest task for them because like 80% of the time they spend time on the integrations because the, they want every system to be integrated 
but that with the custom code and the traditional integration approaches that becomes like more brittle bottleneck and so rigid so what's currently the cios are facing right now so because the new technology advancement like new technology getting uh, added every year some like like the cloud the saas applications the mobile uh, internet of things artificial intelligence the business demands like business demands are growing as a new technology and new innovations happening in the market but but currently the currently the it uh, and the business demands are growing and business wants the it to to meet the consumer uh, expectation the current consumer as we uh, as a consumer also a big uh, want more smoother and more, more nicer experiences more efficient experiences online so whatever we do but we want a very smooth experience very efficient like very perfect results we want in a very shorter time we want the best performance we want the best efficient system we want the different uh, uh, different uh, dif uh, like different types of results at the in the very very minimum amount of time within within seconds we want we want the results online so that's like it is not not capable enough to match with those business demands with with consumer expectation and include like they have a very 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 minimum deliver delivery capacity they have like budget they they don't have like big budgets that they can spend every like uh, like so much amount on uh, like setting uh, setting the new teams and for every for every new technology they i mean they have very limited budget but they have very limited time as well they have like a uh, very uh, limited capacity for the delivery and the demands are growing higher and higher and higher so the, currently the cios are facing the situation and they want to uh, they want to find a solution that with that they can they can close this delivery gap and also they want a very they want to provide a very nice uh, uh, very nice exp consumer experience is what the consumer they want to meet the consumer expectation as the business demands are growing the business wants their uh, wants their cio to find a solution that's the, that's that they can match the expectation of the consumers they they want to make their consumer experience is very efficient and they want to meet their expectation so for that it but it is still working on the project by project basis cios are still focusing on this projects and not on the consumer behavior or the consumer expectation and they are very far from understanding what exactly who are the who are the end users of the system who are actual consumers of the systems what they actually want so cios currently want to find the solution for like how to how they can quickly unlock and integrate the data to deliver critical time sensitive projects like the, because because the currently the data data are stored at some, somewhere in the organization and nobody or, or except that business group or the it group the other other people other business groups other like who are the partners of the group they are totally unaware about the data even the historic data are there from the years it is there somewhere but that data is not accessible to anybody in the organization and they cannot like they are just spending money to maintain that data because that data is important but they are not utilizing that data because that data is not accessible they are not able to utilize that data so so first 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 
question for them is how they can unlock and integrate this data with other systems. Second is how can we increase the speed and agility to respond faster and more efficiently. And third one is like what investments do I need to make to take to set my team and business up for success in group? So like they they need a very for faster, efficient, and more resilient approach. Like they they want want some solution that that can increase their development speed. They can they they that increases their project delivery speed uh, with the agility, and they can unlock the data. They can the integrations. They can integrate the data systems and the people together. And also that some kind of solution that is really, really successful. And they can also uh, provide the solution with, within, the, within the very minimum budget. So that, that's the current situation. And, and so currently what's the scenario is everybody in the organization all the every cio knows that the integration is the highest priority uh, for every organization because 80 percent of the time as as per the current data 80 percent of the time every organization spent on the integration and not the innovation so they want to reduce that time so so here is the data from 2021 uh, report that integration needs from business teams and incre increasing the demand for IT. So 94% of the majority of organization, so they are currently undertaking the plan to uh, for the digital transformation initiative. So this is this is when this is the situation where the need of some transformation, digital transformation arise. Why, why, why that is the need of digital transformation? Because, uh, so it's not only about uh, like project by CIOs and the IT teams and the central IT both has to transform their thinking, like not thinking only on the project by project basis, but they have to change their thinking and they have to like think about like what the end consumer want and what kind of experiences they want how how it can uh, they have to work with the business teams and they have to they have to understand the consumer behavior their end users their consumer behaviors their what exactly they want, what are their, uh, their expectations, and how, how, what kind of products and services they can make so that their end con they, they can meet the expectation of their consumers. So they certainly need to transform their thinking in a way that like uh, they can meet, so it's, it's a, like business, Teams and IT needs to work together. They have to, they, IT needs to give some ownership to the business teams for the integrations and business needs to work with IT to make sure that IT understands what, what exact the consumer behaviors are and what, what exactly the consumers want. So they can design and they can develop the products that meet the consumer uh, expectation, and that that's how they can work together. So that requires a complete transformation in thinking of the CIOs, of the executives, of the stakeholders, of the IT, of the and the business groups uh, in the organization. So this is the 2021 study that 90. 7% of IT leader, leaders report the need for integration because everybody understand that like integration is the highest, highest priority. The more systems are connected with each other, the more like data and systems and 
the more data is accessible everybody in the organization they can use that data uh, for like for for the good purpose like what what they actually want to achieve according to their goals they can use the data they can utilize the data they can work on that data they can they can connect the systems together they can uh, they can and everybody in the like they can they can come uh, connect the services together to uh, create the new products and services like so this so 97 percent of the it leaders report that that they need the, the need for the integration spans across the organization and they request integration projects are increasing across all the business functions 92 percent of the it organizations say integration needs to expand beyond it so now like in the current scenario integration should not be only in it but in it needs to be expanded beyond it 91 percent of organizations that own public and private apis they report greater productivity and decrease operational cost among the other benefits operational cost and also the connected experiences, more productivity, more speed, agility. These are the various benefits with the by using the APIs. And 91% of the organization reports that. So this is the this is these are the pretty good numbers that says that integration really become a challenge for the I, uh, CIOs right now. And what then and they need to find some solution that that uh, that uh, solves the integration problem and generate uh, greater benefits for the organization so let's see now what is digital transformation we we so far we discussed like what are what is the current scenario but but how digital transformation can help cios and it to solve this uh, solve this problem or situation like what, what how they can how so what, so what actually the digital transformation is so it's a very simply i would say the digital transformation is a very big move in thinking how to digitize every part of the business that that needs technology to operate so and in other way like digital transformation is a, by modern enterprises changing from a siloed organization where data and assets are locked away to be an integrated connected company where data can be flow freely and can be used by all parts of business so i would say like currently the organizations are become like siloed organization the like data assets they are they are locked away it's not integrated and from that kind of organization it should be uh it should be changed to the transformation needs to happen like it should become an integrated connected a composable enterprise where data can freely flow and also that uh, where like data systems services assets that that can that can be used by all parts of the business so that so transform so this is called the digital transformation where so so that's a, so digital transformation is to is a way uh, that we can the cios can transform the enterprises from a siloed organization to a composable organization so let's see now quickly like what are the current trends in digital tr transformation that shaping the organization so if you have observed like from last five to ten years the digital transformation happening happening it's a very uh, from last five years, of course, it's a very on the very fast pace. It's a very uh, there are various digital transformation uh, activities happening in the organization, and organizations are really transformed by these activities. Like first, connecting the consumer experiences by definitely by connecting the data, the connecting the 
different services together, connecting the different systems together. Like, uh, uh, so that is uh, like by connecting the different data services and the systems, they can definitely uh, generating the new product organizations, create the new products and the services from the existing uh, uh, disconnected services. So connecting those services together that create the new services and the new products that that enhance the consumer experiences. So that is the first current trend to connect the consumer experiences. Second is the data driven business. So data actually, uh, what kind of data organizations have? So currently, organizations have the historical data, the legacy data, the data, uh, the consumer behavior data, they have the uh, enterprise like application data they have. So they have uh, all this data they can use and uh, they can utilize in a way that, and, and from, they can analyze this data and they can definitely uh, create, uh, they can analyze the data and they can drive drive their decisions based on this data. They can drive their businesses. They can achieve their business goals by you by using this data. So that is the second approach: the data-driven businesses. Third one is artificial intelligence and the machine learning. So and uh, as we all know. Uh, enterprises, every organization in every industry, they spend a lot of time in doing the repeated tasks, like doing the same, uh, writing the same custom codes to writing the perform the same, same task for execution every time for the same task to for all lot of other op operational activities. So through the artificial intelligence and mach machine learning, they can create the programs by which they can they they should not do the they should not spend more time on doing the repetitive task and by doing by making it automated they can uh, machines or the artificial intelligence programs they can perform those tasks on behalf of the humans and uh, organization like employees executives stakeholders business groups they can they can do a lot of other tasks that that requires that a lot of innovative or creative tasks. They can spend their time on the create more creativity and more innovation rather than doing the same kind of task repeatedly. So that in this in in this situation, the artificial intelligence and machine le learning helping them out, and definitely that's that's the third trend like making that all repetitive task automated uh, they can have more time more energy and more budget uh, to spend on the innovations rather than the repetitive task so fourth one fourth trend is the multi cloud computing we all know like cloud computing becomes a major part of every organization and multi cloud computing is like there are there are so many companies providing the services of cloud, uh, cloud services and so that so uh, so cloud services and cloud computing like amazon aws microsoft azure like cloud foundry like like lot of other cloud companies that have the the so so every company is using the cloud cloud computing and that's the fourth trend in digital transformation uh, so basic reason behind the, doing uh, doing the cloud computing is to make the data accessible from anywhere in the organization so uh, next one is partnering partnering with it to turbocharge the businesses that's uh so the this is the digital transformation is not like no it is it is a way that it need to understand that they should not uh behave in an older way like 
IT was focusing only on the project, certain projects in business groups were doing other activities. So in this digital transformation trend, they have to work together. IT needs to understand the business and the end consumers, what the consumer wants. Uh, they have to understand the consumer behaviors in business. They RT, IT needs to behave in a way that they they can empower their empower the business and they have to be a partner with the business teams business groups and they have to really empower their uh, business through, by providing the new products new services that meets the consumer expectations uh, and that that meets what actually consumer wants uh, sixth is co-creating the value with business external stakeholders like uh, as earlier uh, as earlier in the organizations they were not they were not like partnering with their stakeholders like uh, external stakeholders they have to like uh, so now in the digital transformation, it's a current trend that they have to actually <coughs> create the value with the external stakeholders. Uh, like they, they have to create the, they have to share their data. They have to, so, so they have to actually partner uh, with their, like they have to create the value for them. They have to provide uh, data to them they have to provide the services and so so they have to let let their partners or or the external stakeholders know and they have to like, actually work with them and so uh, by cro uh, by creating the value by working with them it creates actually the value so that's that is more important in digital transformation uh, seventh one is fueling business performance with API. So that is more the most important part of the digital transformation that make the make the enterprise from a siloed enterprise to transform the enterprise to a composable enterprise. So uh, so every organization needs to uh, uh, needs to build the composable. Uh, units that they can use uh, they can just plug and play and apis are the most suitable for that they are the reusable building blocks and by re by apis they have to build change their uh, architectures they have they have to change so through the apis they can connect their connect the organization data organization systems and uh the services together and with the apis they can integrate them so uh, and that that increases actually the speed agility efficiency also it it connects the data and systems very well and it it can by re by com, by uh, using the com, composable reusable uh, blocks the APIs. Those are like very that may that is very important in uh, improving the productivity and speed, uh, like and and the delivery in, for every organization. So let's see the best practices for digital transformation. As as uh, we already discussed, like so the first step to plan a digital transformation strategy is that like CIO must transform his or her role and the central IT must need to change, change the change the way it organizes uh, itself to cope with the cope and harnesses the opportunity of the digital transformation provides. So first IT, that is the very first step that they have to be they have to transform they have to change their thinking they have to change their uh, change their behavior i would say the it needs to be become the strategic partner to the business and see so it should transform their thinking 
from thinking about only only for the projects then they have to transform their thinking and they have to literally uh, work with business and work with business teams and work with uh, business groups to understand the consumers and also to uh, in a in a way they have to become the strategic partner of the business mm, they have to provide the products and services as the business teams wants like they have to uh, they have to pro pro provide the products and services that meets and the functionality and the features in the uh, in the systems that they can they can meet expectations and business teams need to help it to understand the consumer behavior and their expectation uh, second is cios they need to transform their thinking like they are a chief integration officer and uh, uh, and by embracing the integration as a very primary and high priority task. Uh, third one is to create capabilities and not projects. And that is for both IT and CIOs. They need to create more capabilities. They have to empower their uh, consumer. Uh, so they have to empower uh, the businesses by providing the uh, new capabilities and not not just the projects. So defining the core capabilities in reusable building blocks, that is APIs. So core capabilities in reusable building blocks, what exactly the core capabilities? So those are like APIs. So every, every reusable building block in the organization that should be productized and designed for ease of consumption. Uh, so API should be, so APIs are not just the APIs, but each API, treat each API as a product itself. And they have to like design the APIs in a way that API becomes more consumable by every part of the organization. Secondly, APIs should be easily managed for security scalability and the performance. So they have to like keep a track of each API, how API behaves. They have to monitor those APIs. They have to put the security on each API, not just the whole application network, but the each API, they have to make it more secure, uh, scalable, and also they have the but they have to measure the performance of the APIs on a regular basis. And third one is APIs should be discoverable and accessible through the self-service. So each, each reusable building blocks, each API should be discoverable and accessible within the organization. And that is through the self-service. Like any, any employee can search for the API uh, and they can reuse, they can have access to that API and they can use that API in their system and for uh, other purposes like uh, having the uh, data accessible. So like, so these three are like, the, these are the core capabilities that should be available uh, while making the reusable building blocks. and. Uh, reusability is, of course, is the uh, uh, big uh, like main capability here. So let's see that like what like current data of 2021, like 48% of IT delivery managers, those who are those are the respond respondents, and their responses are like. APIs generate more than 25% of their organization's revenues. So all the delivery managers or the like most of the executives, more than 90% of the CIOs are saying like APIs, currently APIs generate more than 25% of the organization's revenue. And that's a pretty big number. So let's 
So here is the trivia quiz question. It's a trivia quiz, uh, quiz question time. Uh, so uh, first question is, uh, what is digital transformation? So you can answer uh, in the chat and whoever answers the correct first answer will be picked. We'll wait for some seconds and then we can disclose the answer, Sonali. Sure. Yeah. Uh, can you, oh, can you share the screen, the question? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So there, uh, can I read the question or? Yeah, if, yeah, if you can. Yes, so the first question is, what is digital transformation? Uh, there are five options here. A, big move in thinking how to disconnect every part of the business that needs technology to operate. Uh, B, big move in thinking how to digitize every part of the business that needs technology to operate. Uh, C is book, big move in making a uh, business strategy that generate a lot of revenue. Uh, D big move in thinking how they can change the customers' mind and decisions. E big move in thinking how to digitize every part of the business that does not need technology to operate. So I think, yeah, we have two answers. So, Sonali, what is the correct answer? So, correct answer here is uh, B, big move in thinking how to digitize every part of the business that needs technology to operate. So, George seems to be the winner. Uh, uh, congratulations, George. Uh, George, you can send in your email ID and will give you the details after the presentations. Yes, Sonali, we can move forward. Uh, thank you. Congratulations, George. Uh, so let's see the digital transformation blueprint. So uh, digital transformation blueprint, it's not, it's not a one size fits all path to digital transformation that this, uh, this, this blueprint is not the only only like uh, way to like do the, do the digital transformation and the perform the digital transformation activity activities but it's a kind of a standard characteristics that that is effectively all enterprises share these days and mule, uh, with the mules of digital transformation blueprint it's an uh, uh, organization can easily access uh, it's digital competitiveness and identify, identify the path forward. So we'll see the digital transformation blueprint that uh, Mulesoft provides uh, in this session. So it's a, it's a blueprint that, that's very instrumental in helping our most successful customers establish and advance their application network maturity and integration capabilities. So there are main six elements in the uh, in the blueprint first is the digital strategy so in the digital strategy strategy uh, the steps are like the technology team and the business uh, business team should be aligned and partnered with uh, uh, and have the partnership with api strategy and the roadmap with shared key performance indicators that refresh regularly so it so the digital trans, uh, strategy should be aligned with the API strategy. And in every organization, uh, the integra integration approach should be the API first integration or API led integration approach should be the default for all projects. And the application network breadth and depth is tied directly to the business outcomes in an API economy. 
so these are the task or the, these are the steps to define the digital strategy that is the very first step so second is organization and governance so in the organization every like executives need to make the api led uh, connectivity adoption as a mandatory requirement for the digital transformation and that's a very very basic uh, uh, mandatory requirement so second it the enterprise wide incentive programs for the api led and reusability of the apis so that that program should be the enterprise wide and every employees of the enterprise should understand the api led uh, api led adoption as a must uh, and reusability is the highest priority for the organization uh, third one is governance governing mechanism that leverages the application network visibility to enable built in security compliance and efficiency so governing governing rules and the regulations also uh, should be applied to the application network and that makes ap application network visible or uh, vis visibility with the by enabling the security compliance and efficiency third one is software development life cycle so here from the traditional integration approaches and from the traditional development the if software development life cycle is is pretty much same but but with the modern api development life cycle i would say so that's like uh, from designing uh, from designing develop, requirement design development and execution that's uh, software development life cycle and here here for the modern api led architecture uh, the modern api life cycle uh, development life cycle should be followed so that's uh, uh, to support the connectivity across across organ uh, in organization uh, it should be scaled and agile software development life cycle increasing the reusable asset production and consumption and that's uh, definitely that it should be the life uh, through the life cycle uh, apis uh, it should generate the uh, apis those are reusable assets for the organization third make it automated and multifaceted testing and reporting grain and grain in the stlc with complete ci cd so ci cd is continuation integration and con uh, so continuous integration and continuous deployment so the complete software de uh, development life cycle should be the modern api led uh, uh, development life cycle uh, as per the mulesoft approach uh, fourth one is discoverability and the self service all apis and integrations are easily discoverable across the organization through the cross domain tagged api repositories etc so the uh, so apis should be discoverable uh, that's a very uh, uh, so that's a very basic requirement for the digital transformation that's a very uh, like it should be api should be reusable integrate uh, integration and in, integrations all the integrations are easily discoverable uh, it should be intuitive uh, guide uh, guided through self service with asset recommendations for employees partners and customers uh, culture biased towards reuse of majority of new project integration work leverages existing assets uh, fifth one fifth element is operations so operations uh, uh, the infrastructure in coherent uh, is coherent to both architecture and the business needs with omnipresent devops culture uh, in integrated specialized and constantly innovating troubleshooting tools so every organization should have the operation tools that is like uh, that makes the operations very easy maintainable and manageable uh, with very minimal efforts 
the DevOps culture should be omnipresent and uh, like proper infrastructure uh, should be available. Uh, dynamic operational KPIs uh, through published multifaceted dashboards. So all the key performance indicators, like the, all the operational key performance indicators should be published uh, published in the dashboard so every everyone in the organization can have uh, can access uh, that data and that uh, everybody can perform those operational activities community and evangelism so vibrant internal and external community empowering the application network effect every organization should have the empowering uh, like a community uh, enterprise-wide enablement programs result in widespread experimentation based innovation and global awareness about the platform success uh, that's very important uh, uh, everyone in the organization should be aware about the digital transformation uh, activities uh, about the communities about the evangelism uh, so now let's see how to design the api strategy so api strategy is very very important uh, along with the digital strategy so uh, there are four steps in design these are the standard steps that every every organization should uh, perform to design the api strategy but it's the steps written here are not all mandatory it it all depends on the organization uh, organization uh, how how big the organization or like how uh, it all depends on the requirements of the organization like uh, the goals they want to achieve and based on that they can uh, they can perform uh, the task of designing the api strategy here so first first is establishing the uh, digital strategy that is very important so because if uh, without the business goal what the uh, what <laughs> what business outcomes uh, the business group and it want to achieve what um, you know, without the proper business case uh, and prototypes and roadmaps having in hand, like uh, there is uh, no one can go to the next steps of the API strategy. So first, the first, there are some tasks to have the, that some steps are very basic in establishing the digital strategy is like, first articulate the business outcomes. Uh, second is align the stakeholders uh, for a problem or for opportunity or the competencies like to find the solution of a particular problem the all stakeholders need to be aligned here mostly i would say the business and the it groups uh, second uh, uh, third one is the dis defining the target audience who are actually going to use the system or the product or the services so defining for which audience you like uh, going to provide uh, make the digital experience and defining the end user and the consumers it's a very important next one is validate the ecosystem and the business models uh, fifth one is defining the experiences and the prototype solutions defining the experiences is a must here because without defining the experiences that consumers want to uh, want want uh, and which the without defining the proper experiences uh, outcomes cannot be defined properly so that that's a very important to define the experiences and the prototype solutions uh, next one is prioritize the roadmap so uh, definitely uh, before starting the journey it's uh, very important to uh, def like prioritize uh, the to define the roadmaps and prioritize the activities uh, uh, along the way 
so the next one is secure the executive alignment so that's that's very very mandatory because uh, because uh, without the executive alignment any any digital transformation uh, any digital transformation activities won't be won't be successful in the organization so while defining the digital strategy while establishing the digital strategy in the organization so it's very important for the executives to be aligned so outcomes of this step is uh, you will create the business case or a business plan or i would say the business a uh, proper business outcome document that that you want to achieve through the digital transformation uh, by by establishing the digital strategy and also uh, by defining the api strategy that is aligned with your digital strategy second is the prototype of the solutions that you're going to provide and third one is the roadmaps and the priorities you will define uh, to achieve those outcomes so second is align organization and the culture so in every organization it's a very important that the culture employees like stakeholders partners uh, should be uh, are in the alignment so for those alignment you need to perform some task uh, socialize the api vision and the executive mandate across the organization uh, you have to you have to have like your api vision you have to socialize it very well so every every employee every like executive like management persons like stakeholders the business team members everyone have the idea about what what's your what's the goal be what's the vision behind developing this api strategy and it should, um, uh, executive should make the api vision uh, mandatory across organization second is establishing the trust uh, security and privacy as organization wide values that's that's a must for every organization uh, uh, establishing the values uh, drive services oriented culture that's also very important uh, task organizationally aligned teams by service boundaries uh, institutionalized product centric approach to apis and the services by considering each api is a product self that that's more of a product centric approach um, hire the domain experts and de uh, democratize uh, innovation so outcomes will be the like number of employees certified you have like in the organization every employee should be should be with the proper skills ready to uh, up but uh, like should they have to have the api skills so that they can design the apis they can they can make the uh, effective they can design the apis they can uh, develop the apis and they can execute the apis they can monitor they can design develop and execute the apis operational teams need to be uh, need to be skilled with the how the, they can monitor uh, they can deploy they can monitor they can uh, track the apis and uh, other other um, uh, organize uh, other employees in the organization should be skilled as well uh, they need to do some uh, certifications courses they need to take some courses for having that skills uh, achievement against the hiring plan uh, that's important to hiring the hire the domain experts before you start the uh, uh when you make the strategy and before you start the implementation of the api strategy uh api consumer and the consumer uh nap and set uh, scores so uh third third step is to evaluate and build supporting tech uh first is as either you assemble 
the full life cycle api management platform or tool or you partner with the musoc so you know, they can so so that's uh, another way uh, like rather than assembling and building uh, yourself uh, musoc musoc has already made solution and complete one <laughs> one suit uh, a uh, solution for uh, achieving the digital transformation so that's a complete api management tool available uh, second is establish the api architecture um, that's important to convert the existing traditional architecture into api <laughs> using the api led connectivity and api so establish the api architecture uh second is commencing the uh, kpi capture consolidation and the dashboarding that is uh, more useful for the uh, for the discoverability of the apis for the reusability of the apis for the uh, for the easy maintenance uh, managing of the apis uh, dashboarding it's important activate the security best practices so activity uh, act, like uh, making the apis each api secure and starting those best practices and activating them in the organization so outcomes of this step is to time to market for new apps or apis uh, availability and the secure kpis so last one is the engage ecosystem so that is very important Uh, like making the evangelism and the marketing uh build the, build and nurture the community the organization uh publish comprehensive developer portal and the developer productivity tools uh third one is formalizing the training and certification offerings that musoft already providing uh training and certification programs uh develop or exclude the hackathon programs in the organization uh, launch the collaborative feedback loop for versioning and the support for each api uh, to improve the in, to improve the consumption to improve the uh, like uh, to, uh, to improve the api performance it's a very important to take the repeated feedback uh, from the stakeholders and the external uh external partners uh next is incentivize the community partnership so outcomes for this step is to number of developer uh, registered for various program training programs and the certification programs number of api calls generated from the integrated applications like uh, from different integrations uh new apps develop the new products and the new services developed uh, using those apis and the developer conversion or the retention so these are the four four major steps and the various steps in within each step so they, these this is a kind of blueprint uh, it will help it it's really helpful in designing the api strategy and meet the overall goal of the digital transformation without having the uh, very efficient very accurate uh, api strategy uh, you won't be able to achieve the business transformation goal and uh, so define designing the digital strategy and the api strategy aligned with the digital strategy is very very important uh, digital uh, di establishing the digital strategy is the very first goal very first step of designing the proper api strategy and make making sure by uh, by partnering with the musoc to implement this api strategy uh, in a way that by impl proper implementation of this api strategy you will definitely achieve the goal of the business transformation in the organization so so far we have seen the new soft approach of uh, 
digital transformation is the api led approach and the apis the reusable building blocks so let's see let's see quickly what the api led approach is so there are the, uh, the so the, as per the news of the modern apis are the, uh, like uh, it is defined in three three ways the that organization can make the reusable assets reusable apis and uh, make the organization composable so first is the system api so here you can see this is the example of a system it has the api led uh, uh, api led architecture and it's like uh, defined in apis are uh, defined in three layers the system apis process apis and the experience apis so system apis are the important apis layer where the system APIs provide a means for insula uh, insulating the API consumers from the complexity or, or changes to the underlying systems. So once this API is built, many consumers can access the data without, uh, without any need to know the details of the underlying uh, systems. So they don't need to worry about from where the day, from where the data is coming and from where the data like going but most importantly from where the data is coming because these apis can access the data from the files from the data sources various data sources uh, on premise cloud anywhere where the data uh, is uh, data resides and the system apis are typically it's uh, process independent and it's highly reusable so that is um, uh, that is the main goal of uh, designing the API is to make it more reusable and accessible. So through the system APIs, that data accessibility data can be accessible uh, from any any data sources. So that's the goal is achieved of reusability and the data accessibility goal is achieved through the system API layer uh, in the API in the api led connectivity uh, second is the process api so process api uh, that provides a means of combining the data and orchestrating the multiple system apis for the specific business purpose so in the the middle layer like that is mainly so these apis are mainly owned by the business groups because that so these APIs are having the specific, so they are built for specific business purpose. For example, here in the example, you can, here in the figure, you can see that the, the in the process APIs layer, there are like uh, APIs, order history, order status, customers, and shipment status. So these, these are like, these are these are the apis who process the data for like for example shipment status process the data for finding out the shipment status uh same way the order step uh, status processing the data and that that api takes the data from the orders system api and and that that uh the order status api at processes uh processes the data and generates the outcome and so so that is the process the so, so or uh, the process to uh, for the particular order is happening in the order status to generate the status of the particular order so that is happening in that api so and uh, same way the customers api and the order history api so a, each api has its own specific purpose and they process the data they utilize the data to generate that outcome so that's why they are in the process apis so api layer so third one is the experience api as we all know it's a it's a the mule soft is based on the spring framework mvc framework so the view part of the of the uh, model that comes in the experience api so 
that basically these APIs are very similar to the process API in that they com composite the content features and the functionality of the several other APIs. So, but they are not, not the, like the process API that the, they are more specifically tied to the unique, unique experience. I would say the view more, more related to the view part of the system. Uh, and that, that data goes to the, uh, to the consumer screen, uh, whether it's a web or mobile or any, any other channels. So these experience data, uh, experience APIs are mostly for uh, that. Let's see how each layer of API has the specific, it, it, it satisfies the specific goal of the digital transformation like system APIs are uh, the decentral, uh, providing the decentralized access to the core assets. And uh, through the process API, uh, agility and the new value creation goal is achieved through the experience layer APIs, the innovation and the digital products, to the, the new products and the new services goals is achieved. And also the, the, there are different, so each APIs are consumed and used by different groups of people in the organization, like system APIs are mostly consumed and, and like, it uh, APIs are consumable by everyone in the organization, but these these like few groups of people has the ownership and access accessibility to, to those APIs. Like system APIs are mostly accessible, uh, uh, accessible and like they are owned by the central IT because central IT is more uh, responsible for. Uh, applying the governance uh, in the a through the APIs. Second is the line of this process APIs are mostly owned by the line of business uh, groups uh, or the IT. And the experience level APIs are mostly owned by the app developers who are using those APIs to for the web development, mobile development, et cetera. So Center for Enablement is like a developer communities, knowledge and asset exchange. So Center for Enablement is mostly responsible for the exchange of the APIs. So this is the complete API led approach uh, provided by MuleSoft. So each here, this is, this is the glimpse like how how eventually the api led connectivity architectures eventually leads to the application networks like like uh, here in the in the figure it shows that like three three applications are connected to the, the one application there are other uh, system uh, API-led connectivity architectures getting added, and it all combines create the application network. So each each system is is each API connected with other uh, APIs, and so the APIs are getting are connected here in the from the application network. You can see the data the a system APIs, experience a APIs, process APIs are connected with each other. Also, the uh, different different data, uh, like third party data uh, systems, are also connected. So, data uh, systems and the services are connected with each other in the you know, application network. And this is the time of previa quiz. Again, so second question is uh, what API-led connectivity layer is connect intended to expose a part of a backend database without business logic? Options are A, experience. Second, 
uh, B, process, C, system, D, data, and E, security. Yeah, I, I, I think most of them have answered. Uh, so is that the correct answer, uh, Sonali? Uh, uh, so, people... so here the correct answer is C, system. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's Sujata who got it first. So congratulations to the Sujata. Uh, please send in your email ID in the chat, and we will notify you. Congratulations, Sujata, for winning the quiz. Uh, question two, and let's quickly see the most important part of this session, like how MuleSoft helps the digital in digital transformation. How uh, MuleSoft wins the customers. So that's MuleSoft is all we know. I'll go uh, very quickly here because we all have a idea about the MuleSoft. It's a very, uh, so here MuleSoft, uh, it, it's your partner uh, in successful digital transformation. Uh, it partners with the organizations, with the uh, clients to achieve their goal of uh, digital transformation and make it very, very successful. So MuleSoft provides any point platform that is a single, uh, that's uniquely built as a single product and it's a platform, enterprise platform for designing, developing and managing APIs and integrations. And it deployed anywhere in the, and it, it can cover the wide range of use cases. Here you can see the different use cases that can cover mostly with the like uh, new technology, the existing and the traditional, like uh, the, so it, it has a wide, very wide variety of use cases it can cover, uh, like service oriented architectures, like uh, ETLs, like uh, software as a service, applications, API management, uh, B2B, IoT, that is Internet of Things, microservices, ev like every every use case manage uh, with the help of any point platform, you can easily design, develop and manage APIs and integrations with only single platform. And that is a excellent platform provided by MuleSoft. Let's see quickly the main products uh, AnyPoint platform has like, so uh, the goal is design once and deploy anywhere. So that's the goal of AnyPoint platform. Like you can design, design the APIs in the AnyPoint design center. You can publish the API in an AnyPoint exchange. Uh, so by publishing the AnyPoint uh, APIs in AnyPoint exchange, APIs are uh, discoverable APIs are accessible. Anybody can access the APIs uh, available within the network. Uh, those who are private uh, in the organization, uh, they can access the APIs. Uh, it can, APIs can be deployed anywhere, like on-premise servers, uh, in the private clouds, whether it's Amazon Web. Uh, web services or the Cloud Foundry or the Microsoft Azure. Uh, like it's a MuleSoft hosted uh, Cloud Hub is another option for fully, it's a fully managed uh, platform as a service or uh, deployment option that MuleSoft provides. Uh, so through the AnyPoint Management Center, you can deploy the, you can deploy the APIs in the runtime and you can manage the API through the API any point uh, like API manager. So there are like with various systems you can connect together and have you can have the you can connect the various systems, various services, various like uh, data. Uh, you can connect everything and you can change everything as well. That's the slogan of Microsoft. Um, API lifecycle, complete API lifecycle management that is uh, starts with the API uh, 
designing API specification using grammar. So the four main steps are like design, simulate, uh, feedback, and validate the API. So you can you can design the API in the API design center, and you can also have a mock perform a mock test of the API specification. You can see the uh, by providing the test output, you can see whether the API is written very well. API specification generates the outcomes that uh, that the API is designed for. And once the once you validate the API uh, specification, then you can build that API in the. You can convert that. Remel, uh, and you can also develop the API using the AnyPoint Studio. That's another product for the development of APIs. You can build APIs and you can test APIs. You can generate the web services with the APIs as well. And uh, other products are uh, API analytics. With that, you can perform the uh, analytics for the APIs, for the deployed APIs. You can monitor the API through the AnyPoint monitoring. You can manage the APIs. You can make the API secure through the uh, API manager. You can create and deploy the API proxies in the API manager. You can, you can deploy the service you can deploy the APIs in the runtime manager uh, wherever you want to deploy, whether it's a cloud or whether it's on-premise. Uh, there is another product added that is API visual, visualizes, uh, Visualizer. So you can visualize your APIs in the uh, different layers, like system experience or process. Um, there are so this is the Muse of Cat Catalyst approach. What the Muse of Catalyst is? Earlier, it's known as the Muse of Professional Services. So they have the three aspect of any uh, of there are the three aspects of the Muse of Catalyst approach. So first, they define the business outcomes with the clear KPIs, key performance indicators and align the stakeholders. That's the very first step they perform as soon as they start helping their clients. Whoever, uh, whoever a client need their help, they, uh, they go on board and they provide all these uh, steps to start working with the client and achieve the customer success. Second is organization enablement. So they, ensure that organization is ready to use and adopt the endpoint platform. And third one is technology delivery. So third step they perform is to get up and running with the endpoint platform and start building APIs and integrations. So that's uh, these are the three aspects of any customer success that Muse of Catalyst perform. Uh, there are the six playbooks to guide the best practices. So, uh, so the Muse of Catalyst has provided the major uh, steps or the playbooks that they perform in every organization. So this is a standard, this is their standard blueprint that they, even, even as if you don't go with the Muse of Catalyst, if you hire the consultants, even your consultants should follow the same playbooks and the guidelines are that Muse of Catalyst, uh, with Catalyst approach is, and that those are the best practices that you should perform to achieve the digital transformation. So start with the training and provide the training to your, uh, uh, first is organization enablement, second is the technology delivery, third one is the business outcomes. And or you can take vice versa, you can like business outcomes, technology delivery, and the organization enablement. Uh, there are four major phases. So first one is plan for success. Second, is, second one is establish the foundation. Third one is build to scale. 
and fourth one is measure the impact so there are six playbooks are the training second is internal support third one is center for enablement projects any point platform and the business outcomes or you can first take the business outcomes that's a very so like you can start from top to bottom but the four phases are like plan for success establish the foundation build to scale and measure the impact so this is the 30 step blueprint that musoft uh, gives you to follow uh, follow this th 30 step blueprint to achieve the digital transformation in any organization and it has it has the same six playbooks and the four phases like starts with the business outcomes agree on the business outcomes and the kpis and develop the plan success plan so that comes in the planning phase uh second step is technology delivery technology delivery is to define any point platform vision and roadmap design the any point platform architecture uh, prioritize our it projects and the quick wins and staff and onboard the project teams third one is organization enablement for access the for assess the integration capabilities establish the c4e operating model uh, onboard the new soft and determine the internal support operating model and agree on the initial roles and train the initial teams so it's, uh, uh, as soon as the MuleSoft catalyst joins the organization, starts with the organization enablement, technology delivery, and the business outcomes. So, uh, second phase established the found they established the foundation. Third third phase is to build to scale, and fourth one is measure the impact in every phase. Like in every step, they perform these four phases, and so that's how. Uh, com by completing the first like this 30 steps uh, you'll definitely this is the best blueprint available in the market that every organization can achieve their digital transformation goal and they can actually transform their organization the they can transform their thinking uh, cios uh, the it teams even the business teams, the stakeholders, the executives, they can transform their thinking. They can transform their uh, working by following these 30 steps along with the MuleSoft. Uh, and that's the best partner in the digital transformation uh, initiatives and the success of digital transformation. So let's see how the, so far, MuleSoft helped so many customers and how they are winning the customers by achieving the very extraordinary results. Uh, first, let's say quickly, like uh, build uh, the HSBC, as we all know, it's a very world's leading international bank that HSBC with the help of MuleSoft, they built their API ecosystem and they turned to APIs to unlock the data and build the digital bank of the future for the new uh, new service flows they built the like they they transform their legacy systems of uh, and and the core banking services uh, by by having the new ecosystem and as a result they have like 75 percent decrease in development time so that's the that's a pretty big number that they achieved through the tra digital transformation initiative and uh and so that that they achieved through the api-led connectivity uh using the MuleSoft. second is the decathlon they uh so this is so that decathlon is the largest sporting goods retailer retailer in the world uh, it, it is based in france and 
they use the new soft to uplevel the customer experience with the cashless payments install robots and lot of other new flows they they innovate like they they innovate the new flows and the products and the services like cashless payments and other uh, so with the help of mulesoft they really invent the new customer experiences at a very high speed it's a triple they increase their project speed uh, three times uh, than the normal one so that's a pretty big number creating a single view of customers like i care again the new uh, the third case study is the i care is the australian workers compensation insurance company and they they double their de development speed by using the mule soft they improved the processing speed uh, double two times faster than uh, Uh, then the regular one for insurance claims by unlocking the customer data fourth case study is of lng it's a insurance company as we all know and it's the uk's largest uh, insurance providers they faster their project delivery 2.5 times with the mulesoft they change their home insurance quotes and they 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 get their delivery speed and they they complete their uh, they completely built this smart port and enabling the home insurance advisors and customers get an accurate quote in 90 seconds by answering the five easy questions just 90 seconds it's a really really amazing number uh so they this is an ex, this is the excellent results they achieved through the help of mulesoft and tiktok is the case study that the tiktok company that's an australian uh, fintech company that that is transforming the traditional home loan process and giving the australians more control over the smart loan smart smarter home loan so basically they just um, with the help of mulesoft they are delivering the instant and real time home loan decisions uh, by apis and so the complete pros home loan uh, process they are now finishing in 22 minutes so that's a really good number without having the different application forms the customers can go through the only one home loan process and they can take the decision in just 22 minutes by 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 just performing the single flow so that's a really amazing uh, product they created and with the help of mulesoft they, they were able to achieve their goal so let's see the third question Uh, third and the final question of the trivia quiz like companies having digital transformation with center for enablement has achieved greater agility and productivity true or false option a is true and b is false so uh what is the correct answer sonali uh it's of course true yeah, yeah. Uh, so abdul has answered it correctly congratulations abdul you can share your email id to us yeah many congratulations to abdul uh so this is the last slide and thanks for spending some time here uh, attending this session and this as we spend all more than an hour and a half for this topic so i just i would just like you to get some benefits some benefit from this session i just want you to quickly think for a couple of minutes like a, like you are a cio yourself and how as a chief integration officer like how how just just answer three questions in your mind that 
how would you like to give experience to your customers what will be your digital transformation approach for your organization and how will you utilize MuleSoft as your digital transformation success partner? So if you just, just for a few minutes, think about it and, and just, just think like how, what your approach will be for the digital transformation, what kind of results you will achieve and what kind of efforts you will put to make it a success, who will be your partner, uh, how, how you will, how MuleSoft will help you in achieving your digital transformation goals. So uh, by saying all this, thank you so much for attending the session, spending some time here. And uh, I really appreciate your time and efforts uh, uh, having here in the meetup. Thank you so much. And thanks Mahesh and Kishore for scheduling the meetup and giving me the chance to speak. Uh, thank you, Sonali. It was our pleasure to host you as a speaker. And this is really a wonderful topic. Uh, I'm sure like people will consider the points you have mentioned uh, in the slides. Uh, yeah, and it was really nice having you. So before, you. yeah, before we uh, wrap up, I just, I'll just share my screen. So thank you all for joining today. And you can tweet using the hashtag uh, meals of meetups and invite your friends to join our meetup group so that uh, they get notified for the next meetup uh, and they can register the register for the next meetup and uh, after uh, once we uh, once we wrap up you'll get a feed feedbacks uh, link you can give your valuable feedback so that we can continuously improve on our uh, uh, meetup and yeah if you have any questions you can always uh, uh, email us at meetups at mulesoft.com or you can in email the organizers, uh, organizers individually as well. Yeah, so thank you for stopping by and thank you guys for the wonderful meetup. Thank you, Sanal. It was a wonderful session. It was very informative. Yeah, thanks, Sanali, and we hope to see you again with some new topics. Taking time to join our meetup. Oh, so sorry. Uh, there, there is a there is a qu question from George. Uh, do you have any experience example on IoT development? Uh, Sonali, are you? Uh, I think you're on mute. So I would like to know more about like what exactly the IoT development uh, you mean and what uh, so that way I can connect to my experience. Uh, Internet of any specific experience you are talking about? Uh, I can make George as presenter and if he can speak, uh, let me just try that. Yes. So, George, you can just uh, uh, turn on your mic and speak. Unmute yourself and speak. Uh, I think he's, you're still on mute. George, uh, we can't hear you actually, if you're speaking. Or maybe you can just type uh, what exactly you mean IoT development is. Uh, yes, smart it, talk about smart buildings, uh, uh, yeah like uh, maybe uh, a taxi service uh, something like that i don't know if you have any experience but i heard about a uh, two connection but I, I don't know if you maybe have seen 
something, uh, some connection about, about that. Okay, the Julia so, connect. I mean, my experience is mostly with the insurance companies because I worked uh, with the insurance clients uh, mainly. So my mainly experience in the designing the call center application the second i worked on that is the analytics application so that has many uh, analytics tools involved um and the many connectors i've used uh, so uh, uh, actually the trilio i would say that third party integration tool i have the experience uh, as an enterprise architect, it's a uh, connectors. Basically, uh, I'm not as an enterprise architect, I'm not into the development. So it's more of the integration question, but uh, designing the APIs in uh, so, so that so I have the experience of designing the API led architectures using the and designing the APIs and the with the connectors available in the new soft now uh, and for the for the three system API uh, three layer APIs and so I think that Trilio will come in the uh, system layer API I would say so, uh, George, to answer your question, right, uh, you can just uh, search on uh, Knowledge Hub. You'll find some articles. I know that uh, I've in the past I've read an article where somebody has uh, integrated with Raspberry Pi. So they have installed Mule Runtime on Raspberry Pi, and using Raspberry Pi, you'll be able to just uh, find out the temperature. Based on that, you can send a push notification to change your room temperature sensor. That's something that you'd be able to do. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no problem, yeah. Any, any questions? Uh, Yeah, I think I think uh, there are no questions more. So yeah, thank you guys for joining and thank you Sunali for having this wonderful topic. And, and we'll meet in next meetup. Uh, George, I have sent you a link and you can just go through that link. There, there is a sample reference implementation as well, how to install or set up a Mule Runtime on Raspberry Pi and implement IoT. So it's just an idea, right? You can do like whatever you like, but this is just an example to tell like what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kishore. Yeah. See ya. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for for giving me attendance and yeah, we'll meet next time.